from Westfield State University. The Parliament with Dave Langlois. Tonight's guest is Tori Landry, featuring Drew's News Update and Whip City Sports Random Thoughts and Dealing with Dave. And now, here's your host, Dave Langlois. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello everyone. My name is David Langlois, and this, my dear friends, is the Parliament. Can we get another round of applause, please, please. <laughs> Knock over the microphone, please. Thank you, thank you. Now, because this is our inaugural episode, allow me to explain to you fine folks out there what the Parliament is. First off, according to Webster's Dictionary, one of the definitions of the word Parliament is a flock of owls. Westfield State's mascot is Nestor the Owl, so I'm sure you can put the pieces together there. And second, as some of you may remember, and as most, if not all of you, probably don't remember, uh, the students at Westfield State University used to produce a Westfield-focused news program titled Whip City Weekly. Now, after several years of unprecedented success with Whip City Weekly, we've decided to try something a, a little new. So this is where the Parliament comes in. The Parliament is essentially Westfield State's version of a late night talk show. I say that because much like late night, this show is going to feature a little bit of everything, from sports and news to sketches and all kinds of different segments. Sounds pretty sweet, am I right? Um, but here at the Parliament, we value creative freedom and we really hope that you do as well. So with all that said, let's get started. Round of applause, everybody, we gotta introduce, <laughs> thank you. On tonight's show, we have TV club member Sergio Arroyo. He's in the building. We get a round of applause for Sergio. Yeah, yeah. Senior Tori Landry will be stopping by as well. Yeah. And on top of that, we have Mike Drew with the sports, and we have a special surprise at the end that you will not want to miss. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But before all that, we have some really important business business <laughs> we have to attend to. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the almost entirely factual news headlines of the day in 30 seconds. Hi, I'm Drew. This is the news, and I'm going to give it to you as quickly as possible. Eric Holder to step down as Attorney General. Congressman seeks ban to stop federal employees from watching porn all day. Comcast everyone tells everyone mourner, merger, good customers. Ford. NASA announces plan to launch $700 million into space. Women worried student loans won't prevent her from one day owning an entirely different clip. Wow, that's difficult. Washington State teen tell, calls police to break up his own party. Connecticut man arrested after driving stolen car to meet with cops. There's a currently a breast implant shortage in Venezuela. Obama sleeping with Louisville Slugger under bed now. Artifacts discovered buried in Washington, D.C. suggest humans once passed laws there. Alaskan TV reporter quits on air to promote pot. Doug's, hot Doug's line so long? Wedding, get married, they do. <laughs> Photographer's new series features portraits of cat of her cat callers. Toll booth attendant wishes some one day one high speed chase would crash through an entry bar. Arab Kurdish couples tie the knot, landing landmark gay wedding in Istanbul, Turkey. That thing. Sixteen year old Irish girl wins Google Science Fair 2014. Oh, and I'm done. Welcome back, friends. Now, as promised, I'm here with Tori Landry. Who's just going to be talking to us about her life because she's such an interesting person? Can we get a round, for, a round of applause for Tori? Yes. Thank you. Tori. Hi, Dave. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you doing? Good. I'm good. So, Tori, can you just tell me about how your day has been going so far today? My day was great. I had two classes. I got out early from one of them. That's always nice. Yeah, and then I had a meeting, and now I'm here with you guys. So Exciting stuff. It's, yeah. So, I mean, I know you do some volunteering with the Special Olympics. Um, I mean, could you just talk about that? It's really interesting. Yeah, so I actually, I volunteer with a nonprofit organization. It's a youth leadership program mm -hmm. for sophomores in high school. And every month we do a volunteer project in Special Olympics. This was my sixth year doing it. So wow. we go to the summer games and play softball and bocce and do refereeing and pass out water and everything. It's a lot of fun. Now, what is exactly is bocce? I've heard it many times. I don't know what bocce is. I don't even know what it is. You know, people just start throwing, like, there's, like, four sets of balls on each side, and then you have to get them closer to one another. What's I, the I, game where people have the... the 
the was it shuffleboard maybe were they yeah 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 oh, see, I'm, mix, I'm mixing bocce and shuffleboard like bowling also. I still, and I, shuffleboard I still don't know what bocce is yeah no. uh. I it's my sixth year and I still don't know but it's pretty good it's exciting I, I mean I just based on what I know from you and how you can do everything I imagine you're pretty good at softball though um, I'm pretty mediocre. I did quit in the eighth grade. My mom said I threw like a girl, so I just I couldn't do it anymore. Um, but I did play field hockey in high school, and I almost played here, but I decided to st just focus on everything else. So wow, well, yeah, an all star. <laughs> Thank you. So um, can you also talk about your Disney? I know you have some Disney adventures that you've gone on. Yeah, so some pretty cool stuff. Before um, sophomore year of college, I had went to Disney about 24 times. So. I had found out that we had Wait, a... Wait, <laughs> you've been to Disney 24 times? Before I moved there, yeah. 20... Two, four. Yeah. I'm, I've been to Disney once. Yeah. That was when I was 18. <laughs> Go when I was a kid. Yeah. Okay, all right. So you've been 24 times. My dad travels for a living, so we basically stay at Holiday Inns and we fly on Southwest for free because he has so many points. Oh, so wow. we could, it's cheaper for us to go to Florida for a week than it is to go to Martha's Vineyard at this point. So that's oh why we go goodness. there so often. And now that I'm a cast member at Disney World, I get free admission to the parks. And my parents had annual passes for a little bit. Wow. I get discounts, especially during the holidays. So it's a lot cheaper for me to go there than go on a big, lavish vacation. So what does that mean, being a cast member? Are you, are you like Snow White, for instance, or Donald Duck or anybody? No, or I'm not <laughs> friends with any of those characters. But um, as a cast member, you're just like an employee. Mm -hmm. But Disney like has a lot of like show themes, so they like to stick with that. So um, when you're working, you're on stage, you're a cast member. Even if I'm just serving French fries to someone, and that's basically what I did for six months. Um, and I worked in Columbia Harbor House, which is near the Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. And I just got to hang out there and make new friends. I got to serve Adam Sandler one time, which was pretty awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, so it was a lot of fun. I practiced Spanish. It was a good time. So. Now, as far as I know, Adam Sandler watches the show, so I mean, you can say hi to him if you want. Yeah, hey, Adam. How's it going? I'll see you later. <laughs> maybe he'll come back. He was there on Easter, so maybe he'll go back this year. <laughs> now, I have one last question for you, because you can go to Disney so often, and I've only been once. I don't find that very fair. Can I go to Disney with you one of these days? You can, actually. I do have passes, so if can you want to go Can I go the 25th go, time? You yeah. go to Disney? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Excellent. Okay. Tori, thank you thank so much. You, Dave. It's been an absolute pleasure. I wonder how many people actually drink the milk after they eat the cereal in the bowl. I wonder if I'm the only person who puts ketchup on their mac and cheese. If you had a pound of lead, and a pound of feathers, and you weighed them, they'd weigh exactly the same. You know how those soccer announcers always scream goal for really long? I wonder how long I could scream goal. Goal! Have you ever thought that somewhere in the universe there's someone doing the exact same thing as you are at this very moment? I regret the jalapenos on this sub. You ever noticed how corn on the cob is referred to corn on the cob? But it grows on the cob, but when it's off the cob, it's only corn. So why don't you just refer to it as corn, and then refer to the other one as corn off the cob? Doesn't make sense. Welcome back, everybody. How's everyone enjoying the show so far? Yeah? I think so, too. I think so, too. Nothing like a scripted applause. Okay, wonderful. Back to business, everybody. So uh, this past weekend, new TV club member Sergio Arroyo went to a peace demonstration and snagged some footage of what was going on. Um, so to help explain the footage, I have Sergio Arroyo here with me right now. Everybody, please welcome him. <laughs> Sergio. Hello, how are you? Happy to have you here. So um, could you kind of explain what was going on in that footage there? You said it was a peace demonstration, right? Yes, so basically the footage explaining the concept of violence in Springfield and how we can take peace and song and bring it together to contradict that violence. That violence is not key, but song and unity is the ideal. Gotcha. Now you're from Springfield, you said, yes. right? Is this something you've been doing for a while, or is this the first time you've ever done it? It's something, I haven't been doing the performance piece, but I've been promoting anti-violence for a while. Cool, okay, so how, how did you get involved in this particular piece? Well. Um, the previous summer, um, my cousins got into some problems, and actually around October 5th-ish, my cousin got killed, so that oh, wow. intrigued me. Wow, okay. So, um, I mean, 
is this through a certain program or is it was this just kind of a, an independently organized kind of thing um it started with me and then i promoted it to the church and then this wow. performance group just out of nowhere had the idea and i was like yes i'm going to join you guys so you in, in a sense kind of sprung up this idea in your church and then kind of joined up with this other group and you guys yeah. more or less teamed together yeah. to make this that's really cool man very cool well I, I mean i'm happy you got that footage for us that was awesome no problem. thank you very much sergio thank you Okay, unfortunately, we have to take a quick break right now. Uh, I know, I know, I know. Jeez. I mean, what are you going to do? i got to keep the sponsors happy. I'm sorry. Um, but Mike Drew and his sports roundtable will be back right after this, making its debut. So please, everybody, don't boo me anymore. Stay tuned, okay? We're going to have some good stuff. Don't worry. The 74 people were picked before me in the NFL draft. To fight childhood obesity, United Way and the NFL are helping kids play more. To donate or volunteer, go to unitedway.org slash play60. Now I get it. All right, everyone, welcome to our Whip City Sports Roundtable. It's great to be back for another season here. I'm Mike Drew with my trusty colleagues, May Randall and Nick O'Dell. Uh, so we're not going to waste any time, and we're just going to delve right into this thing. Oh, yeah. Let's start with our first topic, which is everybody's favorite topic right now, the New England Patriots. Uh, Nick, you're already chuckling. Uh, they are, I would say, have to think, a surprise 2-1 and one team at this moment. Uh, the Patriots, obviously, a abysmal performance week one in the second half in Miami. Then their offense doesn't really do anything week two. They still beat the, Vi Bleh. the Vikings because they're the Vikings. Then week three. The only reason. Yes. And then last week, it was a 16 to 9 thriller of a victory over the Oakland Raiders. Yeah, that was riveting. Uh, so, Nick, you want to make your first point on what's going on with the Patriots right now? One key problem for the New England Patriots right now is their offensive line. Brady is not being protected by their offensive line. So, it's going to cause. Some problems. It's like you know. Hopefully, hopefully yeah, they can get it fixed. What's your thought on that? Well, there's also. I mean, who, who does he have to throw to? You know, you have Edelman, and he's probably the only one that's standing out at all. Everyone else is pretty much just ghosts at this point. Like there doesn't he's seem catching to be, like sixty percent of the passes. There doesn't you know seem to saying? be much, tr much trust in the receiving core, no. and Gronkowski's clearly not hundred percent right no, now, and that's a factor not. when they get They're, down into the red zone. Another thing I want to point out is the fact that uh, this team's going under uh, a double whammy right now on the offensive line. You talked about the offensive yes. line being an issue. The trade of Logan Mankins to Tampa Bay and the retirement of the former offensive line coach Dante Scarnecchia. Yes, two. Mm -hmm. The combination of those two things is something this team couldn't afford right now. What's your guys' thought on that? I just think I don't know. Quickly. Mankins. <laughs> Mankins. It was sad because he was such a good leader, and they just yeah. they they're missing him. That's those are well, you know those are just two key losses for the Patriots. So uh, you know they got you know as I said before they got to find a way to like you know. Recuperate here. Yeah, the line looks pretty yeah. lost. All right, so we're going to mold this Patriots discussion into our second topic, which is the current state of rules governing the National Football League. May, uh, you and I were talking uh, before we went on air here about uh, the disaster that was the preseason in terms of NFL officiating. There was a huge concern over whether or not pass interference, the way it was being called and holding in the preseason, would carry over. Your thoughts on that? I'm just thinking whatever lore there is out there, that it's not carrying over into the regular season. It is being more strict, obviously, but I think that with all the rule changing and all being stricter, it's just, it's, it's interesting. Um, there's that argument that it's only for fantasy football, which is kind of sad, and we don't want it to be the NBA. You but can build that up. I think you can make a pretty good case for that. Yeah. Nick, what do you got? <laughs> uh, I agree with May 110%, so that's... Uh... You so agree 110 percent. Yes, I do. That is a face. You mean to tell that me you face. don't have a contrarian point to make right now? Uh, no, not really. I mean, you know, she said it spot on. So, thanks, Nick. <laughs> well, I, I think for the first time ever at this roundtable, we're speechless because Nick doesn't have an argument. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go to our third and final topic, which is, <laughs> if we can get through this, postseason baseball. Uh, obviously, uh, the baseball season is kind of irrelevant in this area right now, thanks to the great things the Red Sox are doing. So, uh, coming up in the postseason, we have the Baltimore Orioles, who have won the American League East, a, mm -hmm. sort of a trendy pick right now as a team who can sort of make some headway in the playoffs. Who do you guys think could be a surprise contender to maybe get to the League Championship Series, maybe even the World Series I'm next gonna, month? I'm going to go out on a limb and say the Kansas City Royals. I am rooting for them. That's what I was going to say. That's not fair of you to do. May <laughs> I and I were talking that. about this beforehand. <laughs> May is all about the Royals. All right, so tell, tell us about the Royals. Why are, you, why are you on the Kansas City bandwagon? The Royals, they haven't made it the postseason since 1985. That was the last time. Well, they also won the World Series, and plus they got good star offenses in uh, 
you know, like, like they have good start offense and they have decent pitching, so I think they're going to make a run. What was your reasoning about this? Since Nick agrees with you this entire uh, yeah, segment Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to have to say I agree with him, but also I'm just going to pick a popular choice and go with the Cardinals as well because... Cardinals are sort of like the Patriots, right? They're in it every year. Yep. Last year, they get to the World Series and lose in six. I'm going to give you another one. Not the Oakland A's because that has been a disaster ever since they traded their middle-of-the-order power hitter for John Lester, a.k.a. more pitching they didn't need. Mm -hmm. That's here nor there. I'm going to tell you that uh, the L.A. Dodgers are probably the favorite right now to win the World Series. We all know that. Clayton Kershaw is having an astronomically good season. Yep. I would be shocked if the talent in L.A. doesn't win a World Series within the next two years. We're done. That's oh, it. Yeah. Those were our three Wrap topics. <laughs> That's Nick. That's May. I'm Mike. Uh, I'm tempted, like Dave, to ask for a round of applause right now. Oh, ah. there it is. Wow. <laughs> they, they're not robots. They can actually clap. Okay. That's it. Our segment is done. Dealing with Dave is next. This guy's going to eat ketchup. You're going to watch it. We'll be back in a minute. Enjoy. <laughs> If you don't fix them, sparks from dragging tow chains could cause a wildfire. And that could be scary. Only you can prevent wildfires. Hello, everybody. Now, um, <laughs> as I'm sure some of you remember, and as our good friend Nick O'Dell here definitely yes, remembers, yes. Uh, last year on Dealing with Dave, uh, Nick said something during a game of Eat, Toss, Keep that I haven't forgotten and that I've held him to. Take a look at the clip. <laughs> Here's the thing. I mean, I, I'm a big ketchup fan. I'm a huge ketchup fan. As like, we can see. You know, if you, <laughs> you know, if you, like, if I go to McDonald's and I order, like, you know, McChicken or McDouble, I order it with only ketchup. You know, that's how, that's how big I am. <laughs> so... Okay. But do you want to eat an entire bottle of it? Yes, I would. I would want to eat an entire bottle, entire bottle of ketchup. What? Here's the thing. I mean, so, as you I, can see, I'm a big. Nick said he would eat an entire bottle of ketchup, um, and when you say those things while you're on television, you kind of have to uphold your end of the your end of the bargain. So Nick, uh, as you can see, we have our very own special dealing with Dave brand of ketchup here. Uh, it's 100% natural, so it is it is pretty good for you. Um, so I was getting yelled at about touching the ketchup, which I wasn't supposed to do apparently. But in any case, <laughs> Nick, uh, are you ready to eat your own words and eat this ketchup? Well, a promise is a promise, and uh, I appreciate being a man of your word. And um, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, after I, after that clip that everybody just saw. Um, I, I now said, you know, I now, I now, um, I, I, I'm now not looking forward to it. <laughs> you but really, didn't really think it through. A promise is a promise, <laughs> and uh, let's see what happens today. I'm ready. So, what's your approach going to be here? I mean, I, I brought a bowl and a spoon and some napkins, and we have a we have a hurl bucket between <laughs> us in case that happens too. Um, I mean, if you want, you could just guzzle it from the bottle, I guess, or you could, I mean. <laughs> Dump it into the bowl and, and spoon feed you it know to what? yourself. What would it, what would be better for you, Dave? <laughs> I can promise you, Nick. No matter how you handle this situation, it, it's 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 not going to go over well with me. <laughs> so just do it however you want to do it, and we'll let it happen. Um, but anyway, you ready right. to go? Yeah, I'm good to go. So I think what I'm going to do is I am going to try to chug it out of the bottle. <laughs> okay, let's see what happens, Nick. Right, ready, guys? Woo! Ready? Yeah, can we get an applause, please? <laughs> All right, ready? My goodness. Oh, my God. Wow. I'm crying. I'm actually crying. I'm actually crying right now. Is that I mean you got a pretty good You got a pretty good amount here. I actually started crying when that was happening. Wow. Okay. Um 
I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, you didn't get the full bottle, but this is a lot of ketchup, and I'm really impressed. I gotta be honest with you. Yeah, I'm good. I'm, I'm still good. Like, I can, <laughs> like, I, like, you know, I can pour it in the bowl if you want. No, I think, <laughs> I think we've seen enough. Nick, you are a man of your word. Hey, I, pleasure. I, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for coming on the show and eating ketchup. Okay, so everybody, thank you for tuning in to the very first episode of the Parliament. We're happy that you decided to join us. We're happy to our st for our studio audience for being here. Yeah, can we get a round of applause? Yeah, they were awesome. They were awesome. Uh, so guys, again, thank you. I'm Dave Langlois. This is the Parliament. Take care, Westfield, and beyond. <laughs>